You're watching KDK TV News at Noon in high definition. Good afternoon. I'm Tyrell Greenwood. Kimberly Gill and Stacey Smith have the day off. The presidential election is just 89 days away, and a new poll from Quinnipiac University, CBS News, and the New York Times shows a tight race in key battleground states. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Martin. The poll shows President Obama with a six-point lead in Wisconsin and a four-point lead in Virginia. But in Colorado, Mitt Romney currently leads by five points. The president is now in Colorado trying to cut into Romney's lead, while Romney has moved on to Iowa and continues to take aim at the, president, at the president's economic track record. It's a law that has caused some to cry racism or foul play. Voters are required to show a photo ID in order to vote. Anchor Tyrell Greenwood has more on the story. I think it's a good idea. That gives you a better chance to show who you are. I think it's ridiculous. It's probably a, a, a way to try to limit the number of people who, uh, who vote, who are eligible to vote. I voted against it. From the average person on the street to politicians, reaction to the new voter ID law in Pennsylvania is always different. Starting in November, if you don't come to the polls with a voter ID, you will not be permitted to cast your vote. It was said to be something that would eliminate fraud at the polling places um, of a voter who's impersonating someone. Um, and there was no cases that anyone could show us that this was actually occurring. But what we really see it as doing is making it very difficult for people who have a long history of voting and those who are new to the polls as a way to intimidate them from coming. State Representative Jake Wheatley says his office is educating the community on what they need to cast their ballot and has even partnered with groups like the Black Political Empowerment Project, who wrote letters to Governor Tom Corbett asking that he not sign the bill. The fraud is the passage and signage of this bill. I thought it was an outrage. With the photo ID law in place, the message is still the same. Take that ID to the polls and vote. I'm Tyrell Greenwood in Oakland reporting for KDKA TV News. Jurors still have not reached a verdict in the federal civil rights case of Jordan Miles. Miles says three Pittsburgh police officers beat and wrongfully arrested him more than two years ago. The officers say the former Kappa Hut student was prowling near a home and had what appeared to be a gun while he was arrested in January of 2010. Miles says he ran from the plain clothed officers because they didn't identify themselves and he believed he was being robbed. Today is the fourth day of jury deliberations. Parents of young children may want to keep a closer eye on what TV shows their little ones watch before bed. A study published this week in the American Academy of Pediatrics pe 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 suggests a direct relationship between violent television and poor sleep. Researchers analyzed more than 500 kids ages 3 to 5. Children in the study who had been watching violent TV were found to have a harder time falling asleep at night and waking up in the morning but those who were later presented kid-friendly programs showed improvement in sleeping patterns. An international fugitive who sparked a standoff and shootout with federal agents in Verona last fall has been sentenced. Frank Perez Jr. was sentenced to 15 years in prison on charges of assault of a federal officer and firearm violations. You may remember agents surrounded a home in Verona in October after authorities tracked Perez to the Pittsburgh area. Authorities say Perez then fired several shots at the agents. His lawyers will now focus on the charges he's facing for a murder in Indiana more than a decade ago. Neglection and abuse, words commonly used to describe what happens to humans. But today, we are talking about animals. And it is a growing problem. Malika Fields has more on the story. A lot of times we get involved. By the time we get involved, it's too late for the animal. He's already suffering. 1,200 animals each year are rescued or confiscated from homes due to malicious acts of animal abuse. I've been in situations where there were over 100 animals inside a home under deplorable conditions. And what makes it rememberable is that not only are the animals neglected, but people living under the same conditions. Many people fail to realize the effects animal abuse has on the community. Agencies like the Western Pennsylvania Humane Society relies on the public for their eyes and ears. There's malicious acts of abuse, which involves beatings, shootings, poisonings, uh, that type of thing. And there's neglect, uh, where animals are actually deprived of something like food, water, shelter, medical treatment. So you're kind of helping, helping those who can't help themselves. If you suspect animal abuse is occurring, contact the Humane Society. 
the SPCA or the local authority. Many of the animals, like this one, have been given a second chance at life because someone spoke up for them. I'm Malika Fields, reporting from the Humane Society on the North Side for KDKA TV News. A porcupine got the best of this bulldog in Oklahoma. The dog named Bella May apparently accidentally cornered the porcupine. The porcupine fought back, leaving hundreds of quills in the dog's face and paws. After several hours, though, vets were able to remove the quills and Bella May is expected to be fine. Student athletes of Penn State University are afraid that the Jerry Sandusky sexual molestation scandal will affect the future of their collegiate careers. Anchor Robert Martin explains. We are Penn State! We are Penn State! Since former assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky's conviction on child molestation, Penn State is still trying to earn their reputation back. It'll affect everything Penn State. Uh, not only from the point of view of the money, because football feeds the beast. Penn State football is considered the staple and the biggest icon of its university. The true blue, uh, no. They've uh, basically uh, hunkered down and they're protecting the uh, brand as much as they can, although from my perspective it's pretty much ruined. Bill Mushi believes that because of the recent Jerry Sandusky scandal, Penn State Athletics has a long road of recovery ahead of them. I'm Robert Martin, reporting for KDKA TV News. Penn State trustee Ryan McCombe and several other board members are ready to appeal the sanctions handed down by the NCAA. McCombe said the free report did not provide due process to those involved. Therefore, the NCAA shouldn't be able to use its imposed sanctions. He said the school president did not obtain the board of trustees approval for entering into the agreement on which the sanctions would include a postseason bowl banned for four years and a $60 million fine. The NCAA says the sanctions are not a subject to appeal. Three young boys from Philadelphia are allegedly responsible for breaking into a woman's home and beating her. A 51-year-old mentally challenged woman says she was hurt when the kids broke into her room and ransacked it. She was beaten in the process. The boys stole her purse before they took off. One of the boys is just 10 years old. The other two are only 12. They used sticks. They hit her in the face with a rock. They used rope and a potted plant. Law enforcement is deeming a lot of these crimes to be bad enough that they should be charged as adults. Police say the 10-year-old boy's mother actually turned him in. Officers are still searching for the other two. Students and police clashed again in Santiago, Chile. The students are upset about the education system in the country. They are calling on the government for education reform. The students burned the three buses during yesterday's protest. Riot police used water cannons and tear gas to disperse the crowd. In Chile, tuition costs are among the highest in the world. Tonight, workers for Allegheny County Health Department will be out spraying pesticides in various neighborhoods because of now virus concerns. Health officials say statewide sampling shows the highest number of affected mosquitoes since monitors began 10 years ago, and it's probably due to the mild winter. Tonight, Trucks will face pesticides in the Southside Flats, Olympia Park, and Mount Washington Park. Health officials say the pesticide is not harmful to people or pets. The state health department says a Franklin Country woman is recovering from a hospitalized with meningitis due to the virus, and a Lancaster Country woman is recovering from West Nile fever, a mild, virus, a mild form of the virus. You know, I don't know about you, Robert, but I hate mosquitoes. It's probably the weather. Uh, Malika, could you give us some better news? Okay. Well, right now the weather is at 87 degrees. You can expect, you might expect thunderstorms later on in the day, so you might want to stay tuned for my full coverage. Oh, excuse me, 82 degrees. The winds are coming from the south at six miles per hour. Stay tuned for my full, new, my full weather report. Back to you, E. Tyrell. Parents are not too happy with a teaching plan. We'll explain. And new information has been released about an attempted baby abduction that's coming up after the break. Let's get moving. I'm talking about getting you closer to a future in the healthcare industry. Check this out. Medical assisting at Sanford Brown Institute. Training designed to prepare you for a career assisting medical providers. You can learn the basic clinical and administrative skills to help doctors and patients in medical offices, hospitals, clinics, and more. Now that you know about the program, 
Give Sanford Brown a call. You'll get this brochure free. Let's make it happen. Call 888-515-4333. Call today. And Lottie present. My keys to picking a great patio set? It must be sturdy. Fashionable options are a yes. Comfort. Maximus. Have a seat. Enjoy. Actually, I would love a lemonade. Never mind. I got it. The keys to enjoying a new pool? The right space. Proper pool accessories. Then, just add water. The key to getting all this at a great low price? Big Lots! Big Lots, big savings. Recent bus fare increase... Recent fare increases and bus cuts mean numerous buses will be discontinued, putting the PAT bus riders' commute at risk. Here's Diamond Green with the story. Port Authority is now facing a $64 million funding crisis. Back in 2007, they faced a $40 million crisis. Riders being affected by their possible bus route cuts and fare increases will be hit hard if these plans go into effect September 2nd. Oh my God, it would affect me tremendously. Port Authority Transit spokeswoman Heather Farrow explains the situation. Currently, we are facing uh, planned service reductions of 35% effective September 2nd. And to, uh, your, to riders, that means that more than 40 of our routes would be eliminated with service reductions on virtually every remaining route. Brett Smith of Wilkinsburg says the cuts have already affected him. I have to catch the bus, at least get up uh, two hours earlier uh, prior to catching the bus. Um, it, sometimes, you know, if you miss your, um, your layover, then uh, you know, sometimes you will show up for late, I mean, you show up late for work and stuff like that. We understand it's difficult, and what makes this especially difficult is that we've, we've gone through a round of cuts already. There aren't a lot of options left for people, and we recognize how devastating this is going to be to such a large portion of the county. I literally at least probably have to walk miles to get my medication daily. So this would affect you very negatively? Oh, very, very, very. I don't know what i do. We are optimistic now. We are working with the county, the state, and also our labor union that re represents drivers uh, and other employees to work on a solution that could help av avoid these cuts. Port Authority staff and riders hope this funding crisis is the last of its kind. I'm Diamond Green reporting from downtown Pittsburgh for KDKA TV News. A school lesson plan made some parents and kids very uncomfortable in the state of Indiana. It wasn't about sex or evolution or any of the typical controversial topics. This lesson was about cursing, and the students had to write down all the bad words they knew on a piece of paper and then on the chalkboard. Then teachers said the words out loud and explained why they were offensive. Everyone was nervous about it and uncomfortable to say it and write it in front of an adult, especially a teacher. The teachers say it's a way to teach kids what not to say. School officials stand by the unusual lesson plan because they say it allows teachers to gain control. The co-principal says in the past, this lesson has helped cut down on the amount of bad language students use. The man accused of wounding former Congresswoman Gabrielle Gifford in a deadly shooting rampage in Arizona is in court today. Lawyers are hoping that the judge will allow 23-year-old Jared Loeffner to enter a guilty plea that would mean life in prison. Last year, a judge ruled Loeffner unfit to stand trial after he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. A court-appointed psychiatrist is expected to testify today that he is competent to enter a plea because federal prison officials have forcibly medicating for more than a year. Gifford, along with several others, were wounded in the January 2011 shooting spree at the Tuscan supermarket. Six people died. The Hoover Dam in Nevada, Arizona state line is open again after it was closed for a security incident Tuesday. Authorities say it started when the driver of a pickup truck ran through a security checkpoint on the Nevada side. Eventually, a SWAT team pinned the man in and he got out surrounded. Right now, officials don't know if the driver was armed or why he bypassed security check. The road to Hoover Dam is closed as a precaution. Authorities say the man who opened fire in a Wisconsin sink temple posted frequent comments on the internet forums for skinheads. Detectives say they may never know for sure they may never know for sure why the 40-year-old Wade Michael Page targeted total strangers in a house of worship, but officials say the picture of Page that's developing suggests he was a white supremacist who wanted to see his beliefs advance with action. A woman and five men were shot and killed at the temple in suburban Milwaukee on Sunday. Page, an Army veteran, died in a shootout with police. New details this afternoon 
on that baby abducted in a hospital in California. Police say Gabrielle Ramirez walked in wearing scrubs, looking like a nurse, and convinced the new mother to take a shower. When the woman turned her back, Ramirez put the baby in a bag and took off. She was caught with a sensor on the baby's leg went off. Police say Ramirez lied to her husband about being pregnant and attempted to abduct the baby to pass it off as her own. He thought it was totally believable that she was pregnant because they had had some kind of relation in the, in the right time frame to make that credible and was flabbergasted that he really didn't have a child. Ramirez was arrested at the hospital and the baby was returned to its mother. U.S. immigration officials say Ramirez is in the country illegally. She has a hearing scheduled for tomorrow. Comedian Joan Rivers caused some commotion at Costco in suburban Los Angeles. She handcuffed herself to a shopping cart because the store isn't selling her book titled, I Hate Everything, Starting With Me. The 79-year-old fashion police host was being filmed by a camera crew yesterday during her protest. Police ended up escorting Rivers from the store and she and her crew left without incident. No one, cited, no one was cited or arrested. The nation seems to be catching on that Pittsburgh is the new hotspot for movies. CNN did a, a story about Pittsburgh going Hollywood yesterday, saying in the last three years, 24 movies have been filmed in, the Western, PA, in Western PA. That obviously includes the new Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises. Filmmakers like the generous film tax credit and the diverse landscape of the area movie shoots have pumped about $300 million into the region's economy since 2009. Nasia Rover is sending back surprising photos. Stay tuned and take a look. And the weather is great now, but Malika Fields will let you know if the big changes are on the way. Get our lowest prices ever at Toys R Us this Friday and Saturday. Say big with doorbusters starting Friday 3 p.m. through Saturday 1 p.m. Huge deals like 50% off any Xbox 360, Wii, or PS3 video game with qualifying purchase. And buy one, get one, 50% off all Lego. Plus, buy one, get one, 50% off all Crayola, Moshi Monsters, and Shasha collectibles. Only at Toys R Us, the world's greatest toy store. It's Pool City's biggest liquidation event ever. We're clearing out over $2 million in remaining 2010 inventory, overstocks, floor models, and more. All pool tables, all brands, on sale, including Brunswick and American Heritage, like the Avengers Slate Pool Table. Clearance price is just $7.99. Floor model bar stools, bars, poker tables, shuffleboard, all liquidation price. And don't miss our closeout home theater seats, now up to 50% off. This inventory won't last long. Hurry in for the best prices, only at Pool City. New research shows many parents are still not using age-appropriate safety restraints for their children in cars. Children are supposed to stay in the back seat facing backwards until age 2, and they're not supposed to ride in the front seat until age 13. But the, the new findings from the University of Michigan shows that kids rarely sit facing backwards after age 1 and are often in the front seat as early as age 7. NASA's Curiosity rover has transmitted a low-resolution video showing the last two and a half minutes of its dive through the Martian atmosphere. Scientists say it'll take some time before full-resolution frames are being back, depending on other priorities. Over the next few weeks, engineers will test the one-ton space lab to see if everything is working properly. After that, Curiosity will travel around Mars, analyzing the crater region near the equator. In honor of the Mars rover landing, Kraft has created a special Oreo. The open-faced cookie has red dyed cream and tire tracks, but the cookie won't be hitting the snack aisle anytime soon. It was featured as part of Oreo's daily twist campaign. As we told you yesterday, some of the experts at Carnegie Mellon University helped Curiosity succeed. Engineers at CMU helped construct the rover's navigational software. The school was also working toward another rover landing on the moon. That rover would search for sources of water and ice on the moon, maybe in the year 2015. Well, I don't know about you, Robert, but I don't like the ice skate. <laughs> Me neither. Let's take it over to Malika Fields with the weather. How's it going today, Malika? Well, good thing you won't have to be ice skating because it's a beautiful 86 degrees. The humidity is only at a 45, so that's pretty much perfect weather. The wind is coming from the north at eight, from the from the north, excuse me, at eight miles per hour, and the barometer reads a little over 30 inches. Now, Friday is a little different. 
there's going to be an unusually strong low in a jet string that brings the rains up into our region. Tonight, tonight is going to be 69 degrees with a low, mostly cloudy, and it's going to be humid with a shower or thunderstorm coming around your way. Friday, it's 76 with a low of 69, and there will be thunderstorms, so you might, be, want to, you might want to be aware of that. Saturday is 73, and the showers are just now ending. Monday, it's beautiful 78, and it's going to be mostly sunny. Excuse me, Sunday. Monday is going to be 81, sunshine, so you might want to go swimming. And Tuesday is going to be 78 with a late shower storm, so if you want to get anything done, you might want to do it between Sunday, Monday, or early Tuesday. Back to you, Tyrell. Yeah, I tell you, it's like we have rain and then showers and I, snow. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. It's official. We've just lived through the hottest month on record. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says July 2012 was the hottest month since record keeping began in 1895. If you'll remember, we had a string of 90 degree days, causing drought conditions over major portions of the U.S. Hurricane Ernesto has made landfall on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The Category 1 storm hit last night with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. Tourists were evacuated from Cancun and other parts of the area. Meanwhile, many residents just plan to ride it out. After making landfall, Ernesto weakened to a tropical storm, but it could regain hurricane strength after it moves back over water. Coming up. Sports anchor Diamond Green will have your full report on what's taking place with your Steelers in training camp. Plus, our special correspondent will have a report on a special workshop. And Lottie presents My keys to picking a great patio set? It must be sturdy. Fashionable options are a yes. Comfort. Maximus. Have a seat. Enjoy. Actually, I would love a lemonade. Never mind. I got it. The keys to enjoying a new pool, the right space, proper pool accessories, then just add water. The key to getting all this at a great low price? Big lots! Big lots, big savings. Get our lowest prices ever at Toys R Us this Friday and Saturday. Say big with Doorbuster starting Friday 3 p.m. through Saturday 1 p.m. Huge deals like 50% off any Xbox 360, Wii, or PS3 video game with qualifying purchase. And buy one, get one, 50% off all Lego. Plus, buy one, get one, 50% off all Crayola, Moshi Monsters, and Shasha collectibles. Only at Toys R Us, the world's greatest toy store. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're going to take it to sports anchor, Diamond Green. Diamond, what's going on with sports today? Thanks, Terrell. The Steelers will be back on the field, on the practice field today, at St. Vincent College in Latrobe. They had an off day yesterday, and Coach Tomlin had to move Sunday's practice indoors because of rain. The public practice begins at 2.55 this afternoon tomorrow. The Steelers will head to Philadelphia. That's because the team is gearing up for the first preseason game of the year, Thursday night in Philadelphia. The only place you can see the game is right here on KDKA TV. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 with kickoff at 7.30. It was a sad day for the Eagles team yesterday as, as it gathered to bury head coach Andy Reid's son, Garrett. More than 900 people attended the funeral. Gary Reid was found dead in his dorm room Sunday morning at Lehigh University, where he was assisting the Eagles strength and conditioning coach during training camp. He was 29 years old. Investigators have not yet said how he died. In a surprise move, West Virginia University has signed head coach Dana Holgerson to a six-year contract extension. Under the new deal, Holgerson will make $2.3 million this year, with raises every year except for the final year of the deal. The extension also includes incentives for winning key championships and a $2 million buyout. This is Holgerson's second season as head coach at WVU. Athletic director Oliver Luck calls the extension a significant commitment between Holgerson and the university. The Pittsburgh kid is trying to make a comeback. Paul Sandefora says he's ready to box again. After going several rounds with alcohol, drug, abuse, and violence, those run-ins with the law cost the McKees Rocks boxer all his possessions and his boxing title. After completing the recovery program, Spadafora is scheduled to fight in Puerto Rico in West Virginia later this month. A tough loss for the Pirates last night. Arizona's Chris Johnson hit homers in the 8th and ninth innings to lead the Diamondbacks to a 10-4 comeback victory over the Bucks at PNC Park. 
The Pirates take on the Diamondbacks again tonight in the game three of four game this series. People who bought free people who bought Reebok Easy Tone and Run Tone shoes may be getting a refund check in the mail. The government reached a settlement with Reebok after alleging the company falsely advertised those shoes. Reebok Reebok already has paid more than twenty-five million dollars to settle with the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC started to send that money today to about three hundred and fifteen thousand customers. But if you haven't already filed a claim. The FTC says you're out of luck. The deadline was in April. Cholesterol levels are improving for American children. The CDC followed 16,000 kids for two decades. The number of children with elevated cholesterol levels dropped 3% during that time. But doctors say there's still work to do. Be, there's still work to be done because one out of every 10 kids continue to have high levels of cholesterol. A local organization continues its tradition of developing future journalists and community citizens. Special correspondent Brenda Water reports. The Pittsburgh Black Media Federation Journalism Workshop gives high school students a profound and extensive look at what it takes to work in the field of journalism. The Frank Bolden Urban Journalism Workshop is a free, week-long residential program for students who are eager to learn. I've always been interested in journalism and I've always wanted to better my craft at it because this is what I want to do with my life. I wanted to get an opportunity to go ahead and figure out what this is about and how to write and what journalism is. This is the 29th year for the program, currently being co-directed by Olga George and Chris Moore. And print instructor Monica Haynes believes the workshop certainly gives a leg up to all who participate. The more experience you have, the better the aspects are for you to um, to get a career when you are um, out of college and even to advance when you're in college when you have this foundation that is laying in the um, workshop. The workshop is a way for us as veterans to give back, to inspire, to encourage, and to make room for the next generation of journalists. At Point Park University, Brenda Waters, KDKA TV News. Thank you, Brenda Waters, for filling that special report. Workshop participants will see their final productions upon graduation on Saturday, August 11th at Point Park University. The Pittsburgh Black Media Federation would like to thank the following sponsors for their support of the Frank Bolden Urban Journalism Workshop, the Heinz Endowments, the Press Club, and KDKA TV. The organization also extends a big thank you to Devin Rue of Devin Rue Styling Salon, Sheila Brown of the Barber's Inn Mel Grooming Lounge, Shayla Calvert of Bella Artistry by S. Renee, and J.C. Penney of Monroeville Mall for their donations to the students of the workshop. That's the news for now. Thanks for joining us. Now stay tuned for The Young and the Restless. For the latest news, traffic, and weather, you can always go to kdka.com, where KDKA is always on. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you this afternoon at 4.